Uh, there's often recommendations, particularly in flights that are going over the ocean or long flights, just to get up and mm -hmm. at least stand on a regular basis, maybe every 20, 30 minutes, you know, to just keep the circulation going because there's, there is risk on a plane that you get dehydrated. So you should drink fluids, you know, move around a bit and don't consume uh, a lot of alcohol because alcohol right. dehydrates you. As does and caffeine. coffee too, caffeine, yeah. People living with MS often have other issues, you know, that prevent them from exercising. And when you do a PT session, you might encounter someone that has bowel or bladder incontinence, is embarrassed to exercise, might have spasticity in the limbs, you know, so that that also can help help prevent them from mm -hmm. reaching their goals for exercise. I'd like to you to comment on that, but also one other piece of this, the physical therapist or occupational therapist, even speech therapist, often have more contact with people living with MS than a physician does. Mm -hmm. And they might not be aware of some of the life circumstances that are treatable. We see our patients a lot more often than they may see their neurologist, nurse practitioner, urologist, um, whomever, because we're seeing them sometimes two, three times a week for four, six, eight weeks at a time. And a lot of times patients boomerang back to us. We'll see them you know, kind of um, when they maybe have an exacerbation or if they have sprained an ankle, they'll come back to us. And so we do get to know them pretty well. And we have to be the messenger to um, the, the physician, nurse practitioner, whatever, like, hey, we're seeing this. Hey, their spasticity has gone through the roof after they have had a urinary tract infection. You know, what can you do to help them? Or hey, we're noticing that they're not exercising because they are having more problems with incontinence or you know, problems with the bowel. And a, a patient may think, oh, I'll wait five and a half months till my next MD appointment. And they can't, you can lose so much ground in a week or two or, you know, or several weeks, let alone um, six weeks that a patient may be too embarrassed or think, oh, I'll just have to wait till I see, you know, my physician. And, and that cannot be. So we, we get to know patients pretty frequently or, or pretty um, uh, uh, closely because of the frequency in which we see them. And then the other complications that may or may not be related to MS are some things that John had mentioned. Incontinence. Um, Again, medication from the MD, getting them to a um, an MS urologist is paramount because if you're having bowel and bladder problems, you can't do much. Uh, you can't do much activity wise. You can't do much socialization. You know, we talk, we see young patients in the prime of their lives you know, who have trouble dating, you know, because they have to be constantly running to the bathroom. And this is all pre-COVID. You add COVID in, that's another layer. But you or the patient, you as the healthcare professionals, who I mean, speaking to the patient open and honestly, and then speaking to their healthcare providers is very, very important. We did a segment um, with Shirley as, um, as our person with MS, and we asked her many, many questions and her healthcare provider about women's health issues, urinary incontinence. And there's a whole field. Um, it's called women's health, which they need to change the name and, and not even so much in the politically charged atmosphere. But uh, working with people with bladder problems and bowel problems, it's a it's a it's not gender specific. Guys have as many problems as females, and the the assistance that the therapists trained in that arena can give a patient, they can be life changing uh, modifications to to their activity level, to their confidence level. You know, it, it's it's amazing. Um, so, bowel and bladder problems need to be direct uh, directly. Uh, addressed, you know, head on, no, no, no uh, dancing around those issues. Keep in mind too, that just because you have MS, it doesn't mean that you're exempt from other problems, you know, diabetes and obesity and the, uh, your, uh, these other problems may be exacerbated by the MS. It's just a snowball, usually in the negative direction. 
So you're, you're less active. You lose more strength. You lose more range of motion. You, you lose flexibility. You get tighter. Your balance gets worse because you just haven't moved. We'll use an example of sideways. You know, we, we move and we live in 360 degrees. If you are so tight and timid and frail and uh, out of shape that you are only moving forward only with a walker, what are you going to do when you're in the grocery store and, and a, a little kid comes and, you know, bumps you, he's chasing his brother and knocks you sideways and you haven't stepped sideways in three years or backwards. So, so many things with MS snowball either directly from the MS or secondarily from MS. Plus, we see a lot of orthopedic problems that are secondary to the MS. Um, improperly fitted wheelchairs, um, a person who does not have the appropriate braces or an assistive device, they may be using a cane when they need a really fantastic wheeled walker. So they may be getting orthopedic problems. They may be much higher risk of fall. They may be at a much higher risk of falling because of inappropriate equipment than they need to be. And like I said, you know, orthopedic problems are, are, are rampant secondary to the MS.